This is the camera app on the Samsung One UI. Today we're talking about the Samsung One UI that's currently been rolled out across all the various networks. I got mine on the Verizon network, thank you for doing that. And today, let's go through the ultimate guide of 35 plus tips and tricks you need to know about the Samsung One UI camera software update. And it will even include the Techie Duck, so you know it's going to be a good episode. Okay, let's do this. Alrighty, so this is the camera app. At the top, you've got a bunch of options and they change depending on the shooting mode that you happen to be in. Okay, let's start by going into settings and we're gonna choose screen optimizer. And now you'll see on the bottom right-hand side is this little dot. If you're trying to take a photo and it's not optimized correctly, it's not giving you the best image, press this button and see if it will help you out. You can enable or disable it with a simple touch. Back to settings. And let's scroll down. Now we've got something called the motion photos. Let's enable that. And I'm gonna show you what that does. So go back into your camera. Now I'm just gonna move my ducky around to the screen a little bit and we're gonna snap a shot of that. And I wanna show you what that comes out as. Right, cool. Now let's go into your gallery, let's press on that. And there's the picture. But if you press the button, it's gonna show you the last couple of seconds before you actually press the shutter button. Okay, and back into the settings we go. Press the button and scroll down. Now you can leave motion photos on or off. So hold the shutter button to take a picture, take burst shots, or create a GIF or a GIF, whichever way you want to say it. And let's go into the camera and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So, little ducky again. I'm going to hold the shutter button down. There'll be a little counter. As you can see, how many shots I've taken. And now, if we go into our gallery, there it is, an automatic animated GIF, a bit of a mouthful, has been created, and there it is, a touch of a button. Okay, and back to the settings we go, and we're gonna go down, and this time I'm gonna change the whole shutter button too. I like to leave it on burst shot, just makes the most sense. Okay, next up, save options. Here you got the option to have every copy of your photos in RAW, so if those of you like to play in Photoshop, this is probably a good thing to enable. I don't, so I'm just gonna go back. I'm gonna go down to video and rear video size. I'm gonna set it by 16 by nine. What's also pretty nice in this new UI is if you grab down the screen, it actually give you some more information at the top at the screen that you happen to be on. Okay. So um, another option is the high efficiency video, good compression. If you're looking to save space, you can enable that. Go one step back. And that was the rear camera. Now this is the front video size, also sending it to 16 by nine, and also have got the option for high efficiency video as well. So the rear and the front cameras can both do this. Okay, some more settings. This time we're gonna choose HDR. That's the rich tone, making your pictures absolutely pop. Now you can enable that or disable that, but now you've also got an option, apply when needed. I don't recall seeing this in the previous version. It was either on or off. So now it's apply when needed. Whenever Samsung thinks that your picture needs a bit of a pop, it will just simply apply HDR to that. Right, tracking autofocus, we want to enable that. But when you do that, watch what happens to video stabilization. That comes off. So let's enable that. And I want to show you what that looks like. And what we're going to do is take a little ducky potent at once and when we move it around the screen you can see that the camera automatically tries to focus on whichever area the duck happens to be so it's great for tracking but terrible for stabilization right back into the settings we go and this time i'm going to take auto tracking for focus off and i'm going to enable my grid lines three by three it's always good to be able to space out your images and camera modes, right, camera modes, click on edit camera modes, and now you can see you can enable wide selfie mode, which doesn't come enabled by default. You can also reorder the shooting mode as you wish. So stuff that you use more frequently, you wanna group them more together. There's something called sports mode, which is actually pretty good for really, really fast action shots as well. And I like this, keep using the last mode so it will remember whatever you left your camera setting at at the last time, when you go back into it, it will be there again. Right, let's go into shooting mode. What happens when you press the volume key? Well, you can change that. You can either zoom in, system volume, or take a picture or record a video. I leave it as record a video because that makes the most sense. A completely underrated and underused feature is the floating shutter button. Let me show you what that does. Let's just say you're holding your phone and it happens to be in this awkward position like mine is at the moment. 
I can move another shutter button to anywhere on the screen, and when I press it, it will take a photo. Great for tripod modes, would you in a stabilizer or a gimbal. So this is just a cool way, if you're left-handed or right-handed, you just move it to where it's most convenient. Okay, back to our settings we go. Let's go down to shooting modes, and there's our floating button. We enable or disable that. Tap screen if you want to take a picture. Again, enable or disable that. Show palm to take a photo. That works really well, but I actually disable that as well. Okay, let's go back into the actual camera mode itself. Now look at this, you can actually hold the button and drag the shutter button onto the screen. And now you've just created your second shutter button, like we did before in the settings, but this time by dragging and dropping. So another cool little hack. Now you know that whatever you touch on the screen, it's going to focus on that location. When you go into the various modes, the screen will resize depending on what you're in. Look at the top. Now you've got your timer. Now we've had that before, so that's nothing new. And you've also got your ratio right there. So if you want to change your screen, if you want to take an Instagram video versus a video that you'll edit later, you can just do that by simply touching those buttons and changing the ratio or the size of your screen as you go for it. On the last little wand icon is actually the filters icon. And when you put that on, you can play with these filters and give your picture a more of a dynamic shot. So black and white, for example, press it again and it disappears. So a nice little mode to know about is when you scroll all the way to the left hand side, you've got something called food. And what happens when you take your, whatever your item is, obviously it doesn't have to be just food. Or whatever the item is, if you want to give that that special effect, you hold it in between the target and it gives you that radial blur effect all the way around. And you can really have a good time playing with this. It kind of really does a great visual effect there. So that's pretty cool, but what else can this thing do? Well, on the top right, you should be able to see a color wheel. If you press on that, it's going to give you this little slider that you can move up and down and change the color of the image. Right, I think we've spent quite enough time in this particular mode, let's move on. So, to change mode, oh, let's take a picture of this duck. All right, to change mode, we can either swipe left to right, right to left on the screen, and it will simply lend you in the various modes. Let's go all the way down to hyperlapse, and basically before we start, at the top you've got the timer. I've left mine as auto, so it will automatically detect what it needs to do. I'm gonna show you how that looks. So I'm gonna start recording, and then my little ducky's gonna do his little ducky dance. Do, do, do. All right, let's stop that. Let's go into the gallery. There's my little ducky. And there it is. That's hyperlapse mode in ducky ducky mode really, really quickly. So the techie duck is working really hard for its money today. Okay, go back into that. This time, let's change it from auto to the fastest option that there is. And then let's go back and doing our techie dance move one more time. Do, do, do. And now let's go back into the gallery. See what that looks like. Okay, that's um, slightly worrying on very many levels. Right, but you can see the difference between auto and the fastest mode that there is. Okay, let's leave the app for two seconds and go into the gallery. And here you'll see all the images and video clips that we shot today. So a couple of things. Firstly, the three little dots, and now you've got something called trash. Now this is new. It keeps your files that you've deleted, your pictures, your images, your videos for 15 days in the recycle bin, for lack of a better word. And this time, after 15 days, you can empty it or you can manually press the empty button. Great for all of us who've actually shot something and by mistake deleted it. Okay, back into the settings we go. And now you've got a couple of different options. Create movie, create gift, create collage. We're gonna choose create movie. It allows me to select multiple images. Once I do that, I press the movie button, and there it is. Now it's created a movie made up for all the images that I've selected, and it's actually quite a cool background music to this as well, which you can, of course, select and choose by choosing the music button. Now here, when you go into it, except the disclaimer, there's a whole bunch of ones that you can choose and you can download some more. Once you do that, it will then change your background music. You can, of course, use your own music or have no music at all. So think of those moments when you wanted to create an Instagram story on the fly or you want to create a cool little effect that you can upload to social media. Well, Samsung gives you all that straight into the interface right here. And one more time back into the settings we go. This time we're going to create a GIF. Select the images that you want to be part of this GIF. Press on the button create GIF and instantly it does that. So I've created a beautiful animated GIF straight by simply selecting a couple of images. 
Now, you can speed this up into a little bit faster or into ridiculous mode. That's up to you. You can do that. Load it down. Right, what else can we do? Well, here you can have it to start backward, to go backwards, to forward, or a continuous loop as well. Now, here is another little feature which I think is actually pretty cool too. Go into the mode, and then this time click on text. And this time you can write whatever you want. So, uh, I don't know, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell button, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you can write anything, I suppose. And now you can give it some color if you want to. You can move it around the screen. Press on plus button, there we go. And now you've got a beautiful animated GIF reminding people to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. So do that, give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel a lot. If you missed the previous One UI video, it will be linked up here in the cards and of course in the description below. If you're new to this channel, hit this head if you like this kind of content, watch some of these other cool videos and I'll see you on the next episode because that's Tech Simple. Cheers for now.